Greetings, my model maniacs! Panzerman Bill, Panzerman's Bunker, come to you with a final on the Land of the Rising Sun group build on Amarama. I'm turning Japanese, yes, I'm turning Japanese, yes, I think so. Okay, enough. Uh, guys, I just got jamming on this and I finished it. You know, pretty much you saw the tank and the figures were done. I just had to come up with some kind of a a suitable base and I wanted to make it in a tropical setting so I bought a one on Evil Bay and got a bunch of plastic scale size plants that are like tropical like you know palm trees and big palm leaf bushes and various shrubberies and herbs because we are the nights to say knee and we like a nice shrubbery <laughs> That's right, love him, my monkey. Love him, touch him. Leave him in an abspilling. Mm. Love my monkey. This is on sprockets. <laughs> Alright, guys, there it is. Pull back. Let's see how big it is. Uh, yeah, I, I built the base uh, you know, downstairs in the other studio and kind of went crazy on the size of it but we'll come in closer you see all the crazy bushes and tropical stuff the, the uh, palm trees were a real trick because everything was high gloss plastic so I had to basically dull coat it and then I went in with some paint highlighted the leaves on the palm palms and the uh, bark the rest of the bushes got either a satin or just left them a gloss because you figure tropical plants, they're not exactly flat matte. There's the Fujimi Chiha tank. And I custom up with some uh, upgrades from a dragon kit, the exhausts, uh, and then the uh, stainless steel mesh covers, and then the dragon tools. The added machine gun from a, you know, the infantry set. And of course, the uh, converted up figures. The dead figures, the dead crew members. And it, everybody said, well, why they die? Right there, see right there? There's the shell hit. Right there above the Hanamaro. Let's see. And right there. Right there. And <laughs> I was real pleased how the tank turned out. Of course, the figures, you've been seeing them all along. Here's the batch of wounded and dying dead and dying and the Banzai charge Banzai Banzai and Hirohito brothers charging up and then the next rank uh, starting to get motivated and then you got the NCO and the command guys back here saying get your asses going or we'll shoot you in your back you bastards you're gonna die for the Emperor whether you want to or not and Banzai Banzai and of course uh like I said, I went crazy with the bushes and the palm trees. Pretty much an inch behind these figures, I could have chopped it off, but uh, I had hope. I mean, I got bags of this stuff, so I went nuts on doing up the uh, terrain. See, look at that. That is wicked. Come down. Ah, bonsai! Well, there's the poor tank crew. Dead. Sato, Dedo, and the Tanko. It's funny, you know, sometimes you get the figures and you get that little uh, sink mark in them. Well, I just left the sink mark on the back of this guy and turned it into the wound. <laughs> oh, happy quinky dink. <laughs> you know, I'm really happy, man, with how it's turned out. You know, I'm really, even though it's, normally I don't go that route. I keep, keep trying to keep the composition real tight. But adding all these extra trees and bushes and foliage really makes the scene and dive bomb again and... 
Charge, Banzai! Die for the Emperor! Who kills the Americans? Is the British or whoever, whoever opposes our imperialistic desires? Yeah. Let me turn that really, really well. I always wanted to do a fanatical bonsai charge, something that was uh, noted for the Japanese during World War II. And if I had done this in 35th scale, it would have been monstrous. So that's why I like doing 70 second scale dioramas, because I can keep it, you know, somewhat manageable with the size. Even though this one's a little extra grande. I like how the, uh, these, the bushes and everything I bought, they came with like different variations of color. Some got yellow in them, some got white, some got like purple, some got red in them. And it adds to the, you know, visual interest. And like I said, the palm trees, I basically had to dull coat every single one of them because they were super shiny. Then go back in and do some dry brushing of lighter green on that and then lighter browns on the bark. I think it really, really helps it make the scene. Woo. Yes, I'm turning Japanese. Yes, I'm turning Japanese. And I think so. No, 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 no. Now, one little thing, it's a stupid little detail, but I like it. Right here tank actually ran over a bush ran over a bush that's what she said oh I ran over a bush ripped it up so I got parts of it laying on the ground and parts of it being sucked up onto the track and her bush got hit <laughs> her poor bush I'm really happy how it turned out guys bonsai alright here's a little sneak peek of what's next you saw the Fletcher destroyer. There's the Oka. I'm gonna do an Oka, the, uh, flying in on an attack on a destroyer with all kind of anti-aircraft explo shells exploding in the air, and the Oka about to blow up. And I even got a lighting kit from Evan Design. I got a lighting kit so I can light up the back of the uh, Oka. Uh, that takes a snap. I thought that was a coin with a snap on. Nine bolter. So you're going to have the Oka. This is uh, the Oka from the Hasegawa kit. And I got some uh, pilot figures that's cannibalized from the, uh, the Yasukuni. It was missing the canopy. Uh, that's one sneak peek. And for the celebration of life, build for Chris Cortell. I'm going to do the Land of the Giants. Ah, uh, encounter with the Rattler Snake. Mm. That should be pretty cool. Chris always did, you know, like, uh, you know, like Batman and, and, you know, popular culture kind of stuff, you know. You know, the roar of monsters and stuff like that, and different cars from different shows. And so, this would definitely land at the Giants, the Irwin Allen series. So, this would be something that, you know, Chris would have been interested in and liked. I was originally going to do the uh, one of my favorites, favorite builds of his. He did the Johnny Quest, the robot spy eye. He did a little diorama of that. And it turned out so good. I, I mean, I was just fascinated with the creativity and and how he created that diorama. And you know, harking back to one of my favorite cartoons, you know, Johnny Quest. I was going to recreate that diorama, but I was like, nah, that's that's only Chris's. He did a fantastic job. I don't, I couldn't do any better on it. So, so I did something else, doing like a popular TV series model build. <clears throat> So that's going to be my thing for Chris. Banzai's done. Got the Fletcher done. I'll be working on the Oka. Wiring it up. And at the same time, working on the Land of the Giants for Chris. 
Alright guys, keep building, keep having fun. Till next time, Panzer Man Bill or Panzer Man's Bunker saying, Oh Vita Zane, my diamond and Harry. Woo! Waka waka waka! Attack on the Fletcher! That's a Oka! Woo! And a rattlesnake! Ciao, baby! And there they are, the little monsters. Daddy just got them feed them steaky steak. He didn't have to yell too much. He said, Come on, mutts! And I heard eight legs pounding down the steps to go get their steaky steak. Right, little Lou? Right, Loki Loki? Yeah, he's fat. That fat tummy full of steak. Huh? With that fat tummy full of steak? Loki. Yeah, he's sleepy. He's sleepy. Hey, little Lou, she's sleepy too. Mrs. Wiggles. Mrs. Wiggles. Wiggle that tail, you huzzy. Huh? Wiggle that tail, you huzzy huzzy. Alright, here's the puppies. <laughs> Alright, guys. Keep building, keep having fun. Ciao, baby.